Salutations from Santorini. So, there's been a lot of changes this week in the Pokeverse. I'm not gonna go ahead and waste any of your time. The wind is high, the traffic is loud. We're gonna go ahead and get right into the video. Thanks, Amanda. I'm Eric Wong, otherwise known as Nighttime Clasher, and I'm gonna be bringing you guys the updates for Pokemon Go this week. First of all, we have just wrapped up the Lima Special Event Championship just uh, this weekend with Martel Galde taking first place with a very, very dominant run, following up with a Grand Finals reset actually against Seba Smallito. And something very interesting from this week's meta is there was no Clodsire and no Feraligator in any of the teams in the top four of this special event, which could be very, very impactful on how the meta kind of builds itself in these next couple of months. But more importantly, going into this weekend, we have the Louisville Regional Championships, where we might see some of the effects of the Lima special event go into play for this tournament. Because if Clodsire and Gator are not around anymore, this may open up the door for a new Pokemon, new ground types, such as we've seen Diggersby, for example. We've seen other water types like Toxpex slowly make their way as the number one core inside of the current meta. And it'll be super interesting to talk about uh, as we are going through the rest of this season and finding our next regional champion. But of course, in other aspects of the meta, if you're just a Go Battle League enjoyer, there's the Sunshine Cup and Ultra League this uh, week for the rotation. And something very interesting to note is the Sunshine Cup for the first time does not have Vigoroth as it's basically top Pokemon in the meta after a nerf to Rock Slide, Body Slam, and Counter. It's just not going to have that much viability right now. So super interesting meta. A lot of play around Pokemon like Talonflame, around Quagsire, and the rollouters that are newly buffed like Dunsparce and Miltank. But of course, most interesting in just the general game is more Peko. We just got the news for Halloween Part 1 where Morpeko is the newest Pokemon, which can only be gotten from the researches and the Go Battle League rewards, I believe, which will be really interesting to see people kind of getting more interested in the Go Battle League because they got to play it in order to unlock Morpeko, which is going to be more common through the premium battle track rewards. The most important about Morpeko is it has a new ability, which allows us to change form during battle. It will have a dark type aura wheel and also an electric type aura wheel. It does a ton of damage uh, for not a lot of energy, uh, which is not confirmed yet, I believe, the exact uh, numbers on that move but it does boost your attack by one stage every time you use it and can be a very, very strong Pokemon in maybe a more specific meta. Electric, not the best right now, given all the ground types, but super cool to just see this feature being released for Mopeko could lead to other things that are similar to that ability in the future here for Pokemon Go and the competitive scene overall. But lots of updates in the Shadow Grunt as well have been added this week. For example, Shadow Coughing is back in the rotation and Shadow Scyther is in that first slot. So super nice if you just want to hunt down a pretty cool Shadow Shiny. But Coughing, of course, uh, we just had that event where you can uh, get that evolved into a Glaring Weezing. So if they ever bring that event back, you might just want to have a Shadow Coughing on hand just in case. But for now, that's all we've got in the Pokemon Go side of the news. And we look forward to seeing you guys next week. Hey there, Kellosaurus here to give you this week's Pokemon Unite update. Although not a lot is happening inside the game of Pokemon Unite this week, the Sylveon event is still running for another week or so, and then we'll get to find out what the next mystery holoware will be, and fingers crossed, it'll be a different way for trainers to obtain it. The countdown for Darkrai has also begun, with it being added to the roster on October 17th. Besides that, a new Wigglytuff-inspired trainer outfit was released in the Aeos Emporium shop that is only available for gems. So, while it's very cute, it's also a very sad day for the 100k plus tickets that I, and probably many others, have saved up. The Unite Esports Awards are back for the 2024 season. Select panelists have voted on four awards, including Season MVP, Rookie of the Year, World Championship Play of the Year and Grand Finals MVP. But they have also brought back the Community Choice Awards for both the West and the East regions. And nominations are now open over on the Unite Esports Twitter page. If you would like to nominate for your favorite players from this season's UCS, voting ends at 4 p.m. UTC on Monday, October 14th. Registration for Wave 2 for LAIC also opened up last week and team signups end on October 14th as well. On the grassroots tournament side of things, it has been booming. <laughs> the Unite East Asia Cup was held at the end of September to gather some of the best players from Japan, Taiwan and Korea. The Pokemon Unite World Champions for 2024, Team Fennel from Japan, won the tournament by defeating SAR from Taiwan 2-0 in the Grand Finals. 
other grassroots tournaments for the NA and EU region are also making a comeback, with the Unity European Cup 2024 returning for their third year, and it's been taken over by Unity Clash. The competition for which country in the European region is the best is currently well underway and is running every weekend until November 3rd. It's broadcasted in multiple languages on both Twitch and YouTube if you'd like to check out any of the action. Unite Battle Hub is also returning this month with the NA and EU Elite Tour beginning on October 15th. So if you're from these regions and keen for a little bit of competition, be sure to get your squad prepared. That is all from me for now and on to the next Pokemon update. Lots happened in the TCG over the last week, mainly surrounding our first special event of the year, the Lima SPE happening in Lima, Peru, and it was taken down by a deck that has, you know, popped up pretty recently thanks to the Stellar Crown expansion, the Terrapagos Dusk Nor deck. It's super powerful, it's super aggressive, and it uses kind of an unconventional strategy in the Pokemon TCG, which is giving your opponent prize cards. Of course, if you take all six of those prize cards, you win the game. So how could, you know, giving your opponent prize cards help? Well, that's all thanks to Dusk Nor, which by giving your opponent the prize card, it's for a very good reason. You get to put 13 damage counters, essentially 130 damage on one of your opponent's Pokemon. And this deck just, you know, gives the opponent the prize, but it just pushes its aggression. It says, I don't really care what you do. I don't really care how many prizes you take. I'm gonna win the game faster than you. And it did just that, taking down the entire special event. There was some drama surrounding this event though. A uh, good amount of American players did decide to, you know, come over. These events are not region locked, so anybody can participate, though they don't grant the cash prizes that regional championships do. They do grant the same amount of championship points. And there was some discuss on X about whether or not these events should be region locked to make it, you know, a little bit more fair to the more local players, players who you know, only get to go to two or three events in their region, such as Latin America, is it really fair for these top or talented American players to come over to these events and thus steal, quote unquote, their championship points? There's a lot to take in there, a lot to think about, but there was some discourse on whether or not SPE special events should be region locked. Additionally, we did see some new news when it comes to the Pokemon TCG, the newest expansion on the horizon, just around the time of LAIC. I don't think it will be legal for that event, but new cards are still new cards. There were a few, you know, smaller reveals, some cards of not super importance. Uh, Clement was one of them, uh, heals some damage from some of your electric Pokemon, but the big card was actually a reprint of a very well-known and loved a spec by a lot of the community, that of Scramble Switch, an item card that allows you to switch your active Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon, and then as an additional effect, move energy cards from your bench Pokemon to that active Pokemon, your other Pokemon, however you'd like. And the main thing about this card is, could have a lot of really solid use in the TCG currently in standard. There's a lot of decks like Reggie Drago V Star that want to, you know, move energy around and help power up a Pokemon. That could be a really solid card. You know, lots of decks, you never know what decks use this scramble switch back in, you know, the black and white era in 2012, 2013 compared to right now. So things could 100% change. So that's the scramble switch situation. We'll see how much impact that card has. And then last but not least on the horizon, Louisville Regional Championships. This is the second North American Regional Championships happening this year in Louisville, Kentucky. And there's a lot of anticipation on what is going to do well. And all these regional championships matter a lot. My personal predictions for the weekend, do not count out Lugia V-Star. That deck is super powerful. It's been one of the most hard hitting decks, just had a super solid finish at the last two regional championships, one in Europe, one in America, both getting second place. So we'll see if it continues to have another super solid, strong showing. Dragapult EX is a deck that could pop up a lot more just based off the fact that it's coming off a regional win in Dortmund. It's got, you know, a sort of new engine. People hadn't really been playing with that deck. So we'll see if it starts to pick up some popularity and catch a lot of attention. And then last but not least is still Reggie Drago V-Star. You know, Reggie Drago is a deck that, you know, love it or hate it, it's still super strong. It copies those dragon type Pokemon's attacks on your discard pile, and you've got, you know, a plethora of options to copy on that front. 
So we'll see how well it does. Lots to happen in the news for the Pokemon TCG this week. And we'll see what comes up on top in Louisville. Hey everyone, I'm Jake Muller, a video game caster on the North American circuit. I'm here to talk to you about the latest news in VGC. Last week, Lee talked you through Dortmund Regionals, the first regional championship in Europe of the 2025 season. But that very same weekend, we also had the first major in Latin America at Joinville Regionals. While Dortmund was largely characterized by the rise in balanced team compositions anchored by new metagame staples Electabuzz and Magmar, trainers in Joinville redirected their attention to different Follow Me and Rage Powder users, like Mousehold, Vivian, and Amoongus, to support their offensive threats. In fact, 13 of the 17 teams in Top Cut at Joinville had at least one of those three Pokémon, with neither Electabuzz nor Magmar making a single appearance in Top Cut. The final match of Joinville Regionals was contested by two titans of Latin American VGC, Argentina's Sebastian Escalante and Brazil's own Gabriel Agati, who was already on a hot streak with a second place finish in the online Grand Challenge competition held just one week before Joinville. Despite the relatively diverse field of teams, both Joinville finalists used the same six Pokémon that Paul Chua piloted to the finals of the Baltimore Regional Championships just two weeks prior. Gabriel's early success in Regulation H continued as his more offensive item choices in Choice Band Garchomp and Choice Specs Alolan Ninetales gave him the edge he needed to claim his second regional title. Coming up this weekend is the Louisville Regional Championships, the second major of the North American season. How will North American trainers react to the past month of metagame developments? Where will they direct their team building efforts? And who will join the VGC Hall of Fame as a regional champion? Tune into the stream to find out. See you there.